Now next, on Shadow, you have a very fine brother, a fine minister of God. He fellowships with Dunamis Center, the power of house, or the house of power, in Taifa tribe. Now he's married with a son, and one in the pipeline, as the politicians will say. He's a budget officer, and he works with the National Council of Tertiary Education. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we receive the ministry of student pastor Eric Sian Hallelujah. Do it better to Jesus. Hallelujah. And thank you for being here. I want to thank God for how far he has brought me. God has been so good to me. To him I say, I did you know that you favor me this way? That I did you know you favor me this way? Oh, I did you know you favor me this way? Oh, you favor me this way? Thank you. Thank you. God has been so good to my life and your life. He deserves all the appreciation. I also want to thank the president and all the staff in this great institution for their mentorship. I also want to thank my senior pastor, Reverend Andrew Kufi Efren, for the opportunity given me. I want to thank my wife and my son. God bless them. I want to dedicate this sermon also to my late father, Reverend Bernard William Siam. May the Lord bless us all. Shall we take a bite? Open to Mark to Mark 11, verse 20 to 25. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree weeping from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cares has weeping. Have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it will be yours. And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, and uh, we pray the Lord, your Holy Ghost, who will enable us to speak your word with power in the name of Jesus. Give it the heart to receive your word and to be transformed by your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. In life, we all expect answers when we ask for things that we need from one person or the other. Teachers ask their students questions in expectation of receiving answers. Children ask some things from their parents with expectation of receiving answers. In like manner, Christians expect to receive answers from God through prayer. In view of this, I propose to you that every Christian as Christians can receive answers when they pray. It is my prayer that at the end of this sermon we will come to appreciate how to receive answers to our prayers. The Gospel of Mark is ready to show that Jesus is the Son of God. The choice of stories of the altar demonstrate Christ's power in healing, teaching, and service. In chapter 11, with the chapter of the consecration, the writer demonstrates Jesus' power in prayer and his authority. From verses 1 to 11, we see Jesus and the disciples meeting, you know, a victory and Jesus casting the victory. In verses 12 to 19, in the temple case, where he entered the temple and drove people who obtained the temple into merchandise place. And re-emphasize that God's house should be a house of prayer. In verses 20 to 25, the victory comes back to the plate. But this time around, Jesus used it as a lesson to teach them their sense of prayer and how we should pray to get answers. 
Now let us find out from the passage under consideration two reasons how every Christian can receive answers to his prayers. Every Christian can receive answers to prayers by demonstrating faith. Hallelujah. Let's read from verses 20 to 20, 24. In the morning, as they went long, they saw the fig tree with them from the root. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree, the case has with it. He had faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Hallelujah. Faith in this context means trust and direct reliance on God. The Christian can receive answers to prayers by not doubting in his heart. According to the American Dictionary, doubt is lack of confidence in or to disbelieve something. Jesus here used this scenario to demonstrate and enlighten us, enlighten the disciples in particular, that they can receive equal answers to their prayers if they do not shake or waver in their faith. Just as he spoke for the fig tree to dry and did so, if they also will not have wavering faith on, in God in what they ask, it can happen to them. Jesus is showing that the fig tree with the, by his words as indicated in verse 20 because he did not doubt what he claimed. Hallelujah. In the same manner, if they do not lose confidence in what they ask, it shall be done so to them. And the second aspect of the lesson is that he told them that if they do not doubt, they could even tell how things to move to the sea and it will be so. That it is so shown to us or to tell us that with faith we can do what is humanly impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. With faith we can do what is humanly impossible. Hallelujah. The Christian can receive answers to prayer by believing what he asks. Verses 23-24. Jesus further indicated that we need to believe what we shall receive or what we have asked for. We need to be a believer of what we ask. We need to believe that it shall be so given to us because God is able. Amen. In conformity with His will and submission to God, when we believe God and believe that He is able to do, Jesus is telling them that it can be done. In Luke 11 verse 10, let's look at what is here. Everyone who asks, are we here? Everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who finds, or seeks, finds. To everyone who knocks the door, the door shall be open. Let's go further. In Matthew 13 58, said that Jesus couldn't do any miracles in his own hometown because of what? Unbelief. Brothers, faith. And for the assurance about what we do not see in Hebrews 11 1. Brothers and sisters, when Moses sent the spies to go and check the land, they came with bad report. But let's look at what we in Numbers 14, verse 8 to 9. Caleb said, If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and we will not give, and he will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not be afraid of the people of the land. Because we will devour them. The protection is far gone because God has given it to us. Hallelujah. Faith is having confidence in the Lord. Faith is having assurance of what God can do. He is omnipotent. He is about everything. Hallelujah. So He can do all things. Precious one. We can do impossible things if we do not waver in our faith in God. There are many prayers we offer to God.
factual and clear. But I came to be telling you that if you have faith in God, the doctor's report can change. Hallelujah. If you have faith in God, what seems important for man, it can be possible for you. Hallelujah. People may be running on other sorts of purpose for their ministry. But I tell you by the basis of God, Jesus said, have faith in me. Have faith in God's way. Believe the positive things that God has said about your situation. If you are sick, what has God said about your sickness? He said, by his stripes, I am healed. So no wonder people say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. If people say you cannot prosper, what does God say? I am the head, not the tail, and so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Have faith in the Lord, and all things will work good for you. Hallelujah. Not only will Christians receive answers to their prayers by demonstrating faith, but also every Christian can receive answers to prayers by forgiving others their sins. Verse 25. Let's read. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that. Verse 25, sorry. And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins also. To forgive from the past day means to do away with an offense. The Christian can receive answers to prayers by not holding grudge against others. The Lord is admonishing us to release anyone who wrongs us and not to treat the person with resentment, with hatred, with envy, with deep-seated animosity. The Lord is telling us that if we really don't to receive answers to our prayers, we need to let it go. Tell the one on the right, let it go. Let it go. The Christian can receive answers to prayers by also forgiving one another. God the Father has forgiven our sins, so we also have the example to follow. Let us forgive one another of the sins they've committed against us. Ephesians 4, verse 32 says, And be ye kind one to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ has forgiven us. Precious one. Christ admonishes us to forgive one another in order to receive our prayer. Even though we are all pastors, we are expected, even though we are expected to live above reproach, yet as humans, we are likely to offend one another. When it happens, let us move with love and forgive one another so that we can live in harmony. Some associate pastors may have grudge with their senior pastors. Even here, we may have grudge with the president, we may have grudge with the staff of the court. Because of one word, yeah, that what Christ is admonishing at this moment is let it go. So that God can hear us, so that our church can grow. The many prayers we offer in churches, God can hear us if we forgive one another. The 40 days of fasting and prayers is not a solution. The anointing oil is not a solution. The pour the water is not a solution. The solution is forgiving one another. Because Christ has forgiven us. Forgive because Christ has forgiven us. And because of that, He will answer our prayers. Hallelujah. To bring this message to a close, I charge you by the message of the Most High God that your prayers will be answered, but have faith in Him and forgive anyone who has offended you. Amen. For your word, for your encouragement this morning, that if you want to receive answers from you, we need to have faith in you. And then we need to also forgive one another. We forgive anyone whom oh God has offended us or we have offended the Lord. Let us help us to live in harmony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Forgive.